So my 2016 Ford Police Interceptor Utility now has almost 50,000 miles on it. And it's been a little over three years, so I figured it would be a good time to give an update on how it's doing. For those of you new to my channel, I bought the Police Interceptor in 2016 with under 100 miles on it, and I've outfitted it for emergency communication service. There's a link in the description to a playlist of all my other Interceptor videos. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And as always, let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. Let's get started. Overall, I haven't had many issues with the vehicle. Most of the issues I'll cover today seem to be related to minor build quality and cosmetic issues, but also I'll go over some changes I've made. One of the first things I noticed when I got the car was how the chassis creaked when I drove into driveways. Now I'm still amazed at how level this thing corners uh, for an SUV in high speed turns, but a suspension configuration that doesn't roll, I'm sure is transferring a lot of that force into the chassis. Uh, I love the way this thing handles, but uh, Ford could use a little more stiffness in the chassis, I think. That chassis flex is rather evident at all the openings, like the doors. Uh, if you look at the door seals, even though I don't use the rear seats much, you can see the seals are wearing through the paint. I believe this is due to the chassis flex and the door moving around in its doorway as you drive down the road. On the subject of door seals, I saw this ripped door gasket pretty early on. Not even sure how it ripped. Um, I thought maybe I rub against it when I get in and out, but that's not the case. The Phoenix Sun and rubber parts don't mix. The window bezel has never sat properly, and the same goes for the other side. And the issues with rubber parts continue on the roof. Uh, there's a strip of rubber down each side. The driver's side one peeled up early on, and I never really did anything with it. And then one day out of the blue, I'm driving down the highway, and the passenger side strip rips half off and starts flopping around in the wind. Uh, before I could pull over, it flew off, so now I'm missing it. Also on the roof, I ran into an issue with one of the antenna mounts. Uh, one of my radios went deaf. In other words, it, the receive was not working very well. Uh, upon investigation, I found the antenna line was open. It was an easy fix. I just resoldered it. As we make our way back down off the roof, uh, we come to the plastic D-pillar covers that are both cracked. Not sure why, as I haven't seen this happen on other explorers, but replacing them, I believe, requires removal of the rear fixed glass, so I've left them. The Phoenix Sun may have something to do with it, though. Moving around to the engine bay, Moving around to the engine bay, so far I have not had any issues with the drivetrain, knock on wood. One day I found this reddish liquid leaking in my garage. I thought it was transmission fluid until I noticed it dried up in a day or two, which I thought was kind of weird because transmission fluid wouldn't evaporate. The liquid was actually from the hydraulic motor mount on the passenger side of the motor. I do have a 100,000 mile warranty and need to bring it in for the PTU service, some recalls, as well as the motor mount. I'm pretty hard on my tires and I'm impressed with these Goodyear RSAs. Uh, I've rotated them once and they are wearing pretty evenly front and back, though I've gotten a nail in one of them twice, but I just plug them myself and they seem to work. I'll need some new tires pretty soon but I'm pretty happy with how long they've lasted, so I think I'll stick with them, even though they're uh, certainly not cheap. Um, a set will run about 1100 installed. That's really it for issues. It's been a good car so far with no major issues, so I'll show a couple of changes I've made since the last videos. The first update is this Tuffy Security Products under seat lockbox. Uh, this is made specifically for the Explorer and the Interceptor. Uh, it came with a key lock, but it would be very difficult to get to it since it's hidden under the seat, so you can't 
really see the lock to get the key in. So I replaced the lock with an RFID lock so I can use my RFID implant in my right hand to open it super easy without having to get out. It's a great place to store your firearm or wallet if needed, and it was super easy to install. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this myself, and they do offer a discount to law enforcement. I'll put a link in the description. Anyone that has seen my previous videos uh, may know that I have implemented a small audio mixer so that all three radios can be fed into the car radio's aux input. Uh, that original mixer was a powered mixer requiring 12 volts, and it wasn't really designed for speaker level outputs provided by the radios. So I've since replaced it with a Rolls passive mixer. The passive mixer sounds much better and it's much easier to get the levels correct without distortion. It also doesn't drain the battery since it's not powered. I did have to put isolation transformers on all the inputs to eliminate the alternator wine. And lastly, I have added the Amazon Echo Auto. This has been a great addition as it adds seamless Bluetooth, music streaming, voice commands, and all the other convenience of Amazon Alexa. Previously, if I wanted to play music from my phone, I'd need to plug it into the aux input, which meant I could no longer hear the ham radios. The output of the Echo is now input into the mixer, so I can mix all the ham radios as well as my music, and it all comes out the car speakers. Well, that about wraps up this video. Uh, after three years, and despite the little issues here and there, I'm still really enjoying this vehicle. Uh, this video was formatted a little differently than my previous video, so please let me know what you think in the comments. Um, should I continue this format, or do you prefer more shoot-on-the-run format? Thanks, and I'll see you next time.